Bruce Shannon, and today in my science class I'm having my middle school students do a lab exercise on power. In this case they're going to calculate their power in watts and their power in horsepower by climbing a series of steps and timing themselves. So let's take a closer look. Now to start, let's take a look at our two basic equations. We're going to start with work, which is equal to force times distance. And then to calculate power, we're going to use the equation that says power is equal to that work divided by the time. Now, I did ask students to make a prediction, and I got quite a range, anything from eight thousandths of a horsepower up to about 15 horsepower. Before making their predictions, we reviewed the concept of horsepower. It was a measurement that was devised by James Watt. He calculated the amount of work done by the average sized draft horse of his day over an extended period of time and use this as a measurement of power. He estimated that horses would be able to work at this rate all day long. In our case, we're only talking about a power output for a range of 5 to 15 seconds. My prediction was 0.7. Oh my gosh, look at that. My prediction was oh, spectacular. Uh, it's 0 0.4 horsepower. The most common prediction was about one half horsepower. Now the force that the students are going to use in their calculations is their body weight in newtons. To find it, we know that one pound is equal to 4.45 newtons. So I'm going to have my students weigh themselves. And then I'm going to have them take their weight in pounds and multiply it by 4.45. And that will be the force that we use. Unlike the horses who were measured doing a useful task, in this case students are simply lifting their body weight up to a certain height. So the force we're using is simply the weight calculated in newtons. Our distance or displacement is actually going to be from the bottom of the staircase to the top. Not the actual distance, but I want to use the height. Of course, Students measured the staircase in parts, from the ground to the landing, and then they measured a single step and multiplied by the number of steps. Our calculated height was 5.93 meters. So my students take their weight, multiply it by the height of the staircase, and that's going to give them the amount of work done either as newton meters or as a unit of joules. What actually is a joule? Well, it's simply a way of measuring the amount of work done. For example, one small apple weighs about one newton. Now if I take that apple and I lift it, one joule would be the amount of work done by lifting that apple one meter high. In measuring the amount of work done, I had students do several trials. We made no distinction between walking up the staircase, jogging up the staircase, and running up the staircase. We estimated it to be the same amount of work. The amount of work ranged from about three to five thousand joules. The next task is to calculate the power, and that's simply going to take the amount of work that's done and divide it by the amount of time it took to accomplish it. And when we do that, that's then going to give us the power in watts. Now the watt is a much smaller measurement than the idea of horsepower, and once again it comes back to James Watt. In this case it was named after him for his contributions in the development of the steam engine. It was this device that helped power the modern industrial revolution. Now for this experiment, what actually is a watt? Well, let's go back to the idea of lifting that apple. One watt would be the amount of energy that's needed to lift that apple one meter high in just one second. Students discovered that their power depended on two factors, not only the weight, but also on their time. They had to walk, jog, and run up the staircase, and they soon found that the faster they went, the higher the rating they had in watts. It doesn't actually make a difference whether they hit every step or skipped a few on their way up. Now the final step was to calculate horsepower. To do that, one horsepower is equal to 746 watts, so they took their number of watts 
and divided it by 746. Okay, I, uh, my horsepower was 0 0.85. 0 0.4. Uh, horsepower? 0.79. This student calculated he was able to produce one horsepower. Running, what was your highest one? Running was 0.9 horsepower. Well, there's our activity on horsepower. We found for running up these stairs a range of anywhere from 0.3 up to and including over one horsepower for that brief moment of time. Well, come back and see us again. Bye. <laughs>